Hello, my name is Tyler Nicholson. I am a maker, an educator, and a U.S. Army veteran. As a boy growing up in America, I was inundated with uh, toys featuring war or violence or masculinity or guns or anything like that. It was just part of the day-to-day -day life for me. And so by the time I joined the Army when I was 18, I was ready to shoot lasers out of a Mars rover-looking vehicle and fly around with my friends and speak in uh, acronyms. Additionally, I had watched enough war movies and had a couple friends that went in before me. and The recruiter uh, ensured me that I would be ready and then the job I picked, I would be doing all the cool stuff all the time, be firing rockets all day long. By the, you know, I'd fire so many rockets, I'd be tired of firing. And the material, the mailers that they would send out were all really encouraging. Like, I was going to lead an army life. I was going to be the elite. I was going to be an army of one. And I'm interested in the relationship between the inter entertainment industry and the military industrial complex and how they work together to make this marketing magic that continues to influence uh, the civilian to justify war and to elect people that use the soldier as their bargaining chip to move policy forward and how those two organizations uh, continue to influence the soldier while they're serving by harnessing this esprit de corps. So when I think about my work, I think about them more as being uh, toys from my childhood, but reimagined uh, based off of my experience in the military and in the army. Um, they're direct juxtapositions of these hyper-masculine and high technology toys and media that we're always consuming and you know they're more a direct reflection of the time and place in which I served. And things have changed so much since my service has ended. Um, equipment isn't as downtrodden and the operating procedures are different as well from what I understand. But the thing that hasn't changed is that the soldier is still the same. They're still these early 20-somethings, these teenagers, these kind of goons that like to go out and have a good time. And that's the most interesting part to me when I'm thinking about the military and the work that I want to make. My primary audience um, is the soldier or the, you know, the veteran uh, because I leave these little hints in my work and these nuances, these moments in time that it's all fairly relatable to us, to those who have served, and kind of reminding us once again one of the million of times that something sucked or that how often we're standing in line doing nothing at all for hours at end or eating the worst food or being in extreme amounts of pain but being told like ah just take a couple Motrin and get tough it out drink some water change your socks um, and just for being a drunk lunatic and having to function in a professional setting which is you know troubling but hilarious at the same time I find I'm conflicted when making my work sometimes because I feel at the same time drawn to these moments in my past, even the worst ones, and also repelled by them. Um, I look back on with much fondness in some of these moments and think back and how funny certain situations were to me and still are, but how to someone who's never been through that time would not find any humor in it. It would be very disturbed that I found something to be uh, amusing. 
So I you know, find myself wondering, how do we move forward from here? What's the next step? I, I believe that the mantra of war is bad is too simplistic and is actually very unhelpful in moving forward. I think it's a regrettable part of humanity, but something I don't think we can get away from as easily as we would like to. And it's important to mention that in one form or another, we are all participants in the industry of war. Whether that is good or bad, I can't tell you for certain. But I do know we need to be more thoughtful in our actions.